All right, class, let me try another uh, video solution here. Uh, let's try number uh, uh, 49. Maybe I should write up here um, chapter 32, number 49. And uh, I went ahead and printed it up here. Uh, but it says that a, a one millihenry inductor and a one microfarad capacitor are connected in series. All right, so I'm going to take this inductor. So there's the, the new part for us, the uh, inductor to part of our circuits. And then it goes to a capacitor. So I'll put a little C here. That's kind of, uh, we've done a lot of capacitor stuff on for that's, I guess I'd say we, we know a lot about that. And of course, now we're mixing them uh, together. Um, so one millihenries and uh, what was this capacitor? Uh, one microfarad. <clears throat> okay, so they're hooked in series. The current in the circuit is described by, and so I'll just say the current is heading this way. Don't really know which direction, although they're in series, so it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, they say it is 20 multiplied by T. So the current is increasing linearly as a function of time. So at time equals to zero, there's no current, and then it has a slope of, of 20. And we don't really know the rest of the circuit, so, and that's fine. We just know that the current would be changing uh, by that much. So then... And as we should put here, that T is in seconds and the current is in amps. The capacitor initially has no charge. Determine A, the voltage across the inductor as a function of time. Well, when we applied Faraday's law, so let me put here Faraday's law, which we learned back in chapter 31, and we applied it to a inductor or a coil in a uh, circuit, uh, we found out that the change in flux is coming from the fact that there would be this change, maybe I'll draw it in green, there would be this change of a magnetic field. See, the inductor here makes a magnetic field due to the current that is in the inductor, okay? And if that current is changing, then the magnetic field is changing. So this should come up to a negative sign with a bunch of stuff, and then how the current is changing. So the fundamental physics is that there's a change in a flux. And in this case, the flux comes from a magnetic field. And in this case, when it's in a circuit, that magnetic field is created by the current within itself. And so that's why we call this a self-inductance, and it's coming from the current. So this is our equation for our circuit. I wouldn't necessarily call it the fundamental physics. This is more the fundamental physics. But that's what I wanted to emphasize as I got started in this problem, that I hope you didn't miss that, that the fundamental physics is chapter 31, and now we're applying it to these coils within the circuit themselves, and so they affect themselves. And the flux comes from the changing field, magnetic field, and the changing magnetic field comes from the changing current. And so this, all this stuff, let's not worry too much about it, and that's what we call the inductance. So the two important pieces here, or maybe I should say three, and you can see them in the three equation, is that there is a voltage that is created because of this inductor. And it's coming from this change in flux, which the change in flux ultimately comes from the change in current. So we could put one factor, which is all the other stuff, like how many turns are in the coil, uh, how long is the coil, how, how big is the cross-sectional area, which lets the flux go through. So all of those are buried in here into some constant, so we just call it the inductance of the inductor, and it's part of the geometry of it. And the, of course, physical effect is that the current changes, and so this is the part, or the three big pieces, the physical size of the inductor, and then this, say, the change in current in the inductor, the two of those together 
multiplied gives me the back EMF. And so this is what we get when we take Faraday's law and we apply it within a circuit and say that the flux is, is from itself. Well, maybe that's more lecturing than it is solving the problem. But if you didn't get that fundamental idea during the reading or the lecture, I thought I would throw that out now. All right. So with that in mind, maybe I'll just go to page two. Oh, and I'm out of paper. Let me grab another one. All right. So on page two here, let me just use this idea that the EMF is the inductance times the DI dt. Because that actually then makes part A a real real simple because they told us directly in the problem that the inductance is one uh, milla henrys and the current they also directly told us is, ten, is 20 multiplied by t and so that makes a fairly easy uh, derivative. You take the derivative of this, you get 20. Now, maybe I should watch my units here. Uh, this would be amps and then per second. So this is 20 amps per second. Okay. And so I'm going to have 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, multiplied then by the 20, that's the numbers, and then I get a Henry times an amp over a second. And when you multiply that, you get negative 20 times 10 to the minus 3. And this does come out to be uh, volts. Um, this Henry then was defined uh, based upon, really, on this equation. And so if you look at the definition. Here's how we, we looked at it. It's the EMF per rate of change. And so we said, let's call a Henry the uh, fact that you would get one volt if the current was changing with a rate of one amp per second. So a Henry is a volt per amp each second. So, of course, if you then are multiplying it by amp over second, the amps cancel, the seconds cancel, and you lift with, with voltage. So, yeah, the units work out well also, and that's probably worth pointing out too because I think for many of you, this is the first time you've heard of the units uh, of, a, of a Henry. And so just like the first time you probably learned about a joule or a watt way back in Physics 121, it's nice to kind of look at it. And this, this semester, actually, we've had a lot of new units thrown at you. Uh, the Coulomb, uh, starting there, um, but, uh, uh, you know, a, a Weber and, um, of course, a Tesla. Anyways, but this is, this is a Henry. So that's the, the first one. Uh, B is actually kind of straightforward, too. It says the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. In fact, we have to go all the way back to chapter 26. If you remember, the definition of a capacitor is the charge per volt. So the voltage is the amount of charge over the capacitance. And so we have to figure out how much charge is on this uh, capacitor. So if the capacitor starts with, say, zero charge and starts building up, this is the flow of the, of the current, if you will. Uh, remember, the current is dq dt. So in other words, how much change in charge flows along this circuit would be right here. It would be the current at that moment multiplied by a small amount of time. That would be the increase in, in charge. So to get the total charge, I would add up all the dQs. And so I would take a, uh, you know, starting at time equaling zero, so T equaling zero, and increasing it to some moment in time T, then, and that of course could be one second or two seconds or three seconds, I'll just leave it as a variable, so at some later moment T, 
uh, it would have this much charge on it. So from T equaling zero to T of DQ, and DQ is I dt. And of course, the I, as we already said, is 20 T dt, going from zero to T. So this would be 20, and then you would have T squared over two, evaluated from zero to T. And then that makes a 10t squared. So this would be the mathematical formula for the charge on the capacitor. So taking that the voltage is charge divided by a capacitance, I would take this 10t squared and divide it by the capacitance, which they said was 1 uh, microfarad. And maybe I'll put those together because that would be 10 times 10 to the 6th t squared, uh, which, of course, I'll just write as 10 to the oops 7th t squared. And there would be the equation for the voltage. I think that's what it said, b. The voltage, yeah. So we've got the, the voltage... on the inductor and the voltage on the capacitor. And as a side note, let's take a moment and, and make sure we understand these equations. I'll call it reading the equation. You'll notice here for the voltage on the inductor, it was just a number and it stayed that way. It didn't increase, didn't decrease, didn't stay, you know, during this whole uh, process. Um, and that makes sense because the voltage depends upon the rate of change. And so the voltage would only change if the rate of change of the current changed. <laughs> and so it, it doesn't, though. The, the uh, formula for the current is very clear. It is just 20 times T. So the changing of the current, that is the derivative of this, is always 20. So we always have the same rate of change. So we always have a 20 here. And so we always have a 20 times this inductance. And so we always get that number. So based on this current, the voltage on the inductor is a constant number the whole time because it's based upon the change of the current and the change of the current is a constant uh, value. Now, that that's kind of rare. That doesn't normally happen. You'll see that they didn't even give you the complete circuit of how to make this happen. They just said, oh, this is what is happening. And really, it's more of a mathematical one to kind of help you with your learning because this usually is a lot more complicated in reality where the current... Uh, has a second derivative. In other words, not only is the current changing with time, but the rate at which the current changes with time is also changing. And so that would mean the voltage on the inductor keeps changing with time. Now, for the capacitor, you kind of see that. You know that the capacitor, the voltage depends upon charge, and since we're constantly increasing the current going into this capacitor, we would expect the voltage to constantly be increasing. And, of course, that's what we, we have here. All right, well, finally getting to really the question that was asked by email, but I thought I would uh, do the whole whole uh, video here. It was about C. It says the time when the energy stored in the capacitor is first greater than the energy stored in the inductor. So why don't we go back to chapter 26 again and say the energy stored in the capacitor is one-half CV squared. Uh, I like to put a little E under here because we know that this energy is stored in an electric field. And so as the charge is building up here in this capacitor, there is an electric field here. So we said back in 26, uh, chapter 26, that there's an energy stored in the electric field. And this was the, the formula. And of course, notice it depends upon the square of the voltage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. <clears throat> also, uh, new for this chapter is the energy stored in the magnetic field. And uh, so up until this point, we've been talking about the field here. And, of course, we use Faraday's law to talk about the 
back EMF produced by the change of that field. But until we put it in a circuit, we didn't really talk about the energy. But just like the capacitor has energy stored in the electric field, the inductor has energy stored in the magnetic field. And let me not take the time here in this video to derive that equation. That was part of the book and the lecture. But we came up with this. We said that it depends upon, of course, the inductor itself and the current squared. And, and, and you can see a good comparison between these two. It makes total sense that it would depend upon what's making the field. So in the inductor, it's the current that makes the field. So it's the current squared related to the energy. Uh, just like here, the field is made by the, by the charges, which is connected to the voltage here. So it's the voltage that determines the energy here. So, so these are our two uh, equations. And so you can actually see at time equals to zero, so you come back here with the voltage of the capacitor, at time equals to zero, you've got no energy stored on the uh, capacitor. But uh, the inductor has, oh, I guess the inductor has no energy also. So maybe that was a, a bad uh, example here. Um, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have started to, to say that. Let me, let me set this up then and go through the, the math here. Uh, let's see, which one is bigger? They want to know the time when the energy is stored in the capacitor. So when is one-half CV squared greater than one-half LI squared? That's what they want to know. All right, so going on to page three then, and taking this equation, maybe the first thing I'll do is cancel off a one-half on each side. And the capacitor was the, and that was the 10 microfarad, one microfarad. Let me double check that. Uh, one microfarad. So I'm going to go one microfarad times the voltage squared. So that'd be 10 to the seventh squared and T squared squared. Uh, when is that greater than, and so here's the inductance, one milla, and here's the current, so 20 T squared. All right, well, it looks like we got a bunch of powers of uh, 10 here. It looks like this is a 14, 14 minus 6 makes 10 to the 8, this makes T to the 4th. Uh, this would, I guess, be a, you know, I'll do the 10 to the minus 3, but 20 squared is 400, and this would be T squared. And so when is it uh, greater than? Well, you can see, by the way, they are equal at T equals to 0. 0 there equals 0 there, and that's what I started to say, is that time equals to 0. They, they each have 0 energy. They have 0 energy because there's no charge on the, uh, capacitor in this one, and there's also no current in the in inductor here, okay? But solving this for when T doesn't equals to zero, so if it doesn't equal to zero, I can divide by T squared. I get T squared greater than, and uh, maybe I'll just move this 10 to the minus 8 over here. So this will be 400 times 10. Let's see, 8, move it up, minus 8 is minus 11. And then, grab a calculator here. If I take the square root of 400 times 10 to the negative 11, I get time at greater than 6.32 times 10 to the minus 5. Or maybe in engineering units, I will make that 63.2 microseconds. So at that point, and any time beyond that, uh, it looks like this term, based on the current, has more 
than the uh, capacitor. All right, nice. Hope that helped.